Well, it's great to welcome a legend, particularly on the guitar, Brian Walsh. First of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you here in twofold. Not only do we have you here, but tell me when this picture was taken. Um, I took it in 2006. I went to Croatia and went into this big uh, movie set. And I just liked the way it looked. You know, we went there and did some business, so we just took photos in the school. Well, before we get into the life and the success of corn and where you are now, a lot of our viewers are going to want to know if I have more tattoos or you, how many tattoos do you figure you have? I don't know. It's uh, too many to count. <laughs> but I want, I, two that I want to really show, two that I really love, is right on your knuckles. This is quite new. We've got, uh, you've got Jesus on this one yeah. and love on the other. Yeah, I, did, I put Jesus this way so I could see it. That's awesome. Yeah. And then tell me about the love. Uh, I just felt so much love, you know, when, when God touched me, and, and that's a, it says in the Bible, God is love. So uh, I want to tattoo love on my knuckles. Well, we'll get to some of the, these incredible tattoos. You're a, a living statement, a walking light in the Word. But let's take you back. We're not too far apart. We took maybe two different journeys. Uh, you were born in Torrance. I was mm -hmm. born in Redondo Beach, oh, so wow. we would have been neighbors. Oh, wow. Uh, but you were a quiet kid. How does a quiet kid growing up there get into be a lead guitarist of one of the elites in the world? Uh, you know what? I just poured myself into music. You know, that's, it's what I was good at. I was quiet, but I was like, I was crazy with the music. You know, metal music was what I liked, and, you know, metal's loud. So I guess it was my way of expressing my you know, going through the loud music because I was quiet. So it just, it just kind of happened. And, uh, you know, I got a lot, a lot of praise from my peers. You know, they're like all their favorite songs I could play at a, at a young age. I was just good at it. All so. right. Now, let metal is loud. So we have to give tribute to your parents for letting you crank it. What did the neighbors think of this noise coming out of the? Well, you know, back then, the amps were, you know, only that big. So. Okay. You know, I didn't turn it up that loud. As long as I could hear it and get a nice crunchy sound out of it, I was fine. But my parents were like, they were stoked too because, you know, I, was, I got pretty good fast. You know, I was learning Journey solos, ACDC songs and stuff pretty, fa pretty fast early on. And, you know, tenth, uh, I was 10 years old in fifth grade. I was like, meow, 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 learning uh, Don't Stop Believing from Journey and, uh, and Ted Nugent and all this stuff. And, and my dad was stoked because I learned Ghost Riders in the Sky. And he used to always come by and make me play. That's it. Johnny Cash. Is it? Oh, I didn't even know who it was. <laughs> I just, bum, bam, 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 bam. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Learn good. something new every day. <laughs> so you're playing this music. And, you know, it's a dream of a lot of us as youth is wanting to be rock stars. You guys are our ultimate idols without a question. At what point did it go from a passion to playing in front of 10,000 people? Uh, well, we got together, all the guys in Corn when we were teenagers, and we, you know, we had these joke bands. You know, we'd we try to write songs, and there were there were songs. You know, we, they had verse, chorus, verse, chorus, uh, and then end. You know, like two two minute, three minute songs, and with cheesy lyrics. And we just did that for fun. You know, played around, got the got the feel of what it was like to just get in front of people and play. But we we kind of parted ways when we when we got out of high school for a little bit, and we hooked back up somehow in LA you know just circumstances led us to LA and you know there was a the other three guys David Fieldy and Monkey had a different singer and they were playing in a band called LAPD and I, I ended up hanging out with them hooking up with them and drinking beer with them and stuff and actually roading for them I, I roadied for, for Monkey the guitar player and uh, eventually they kicked out the singer and they and they got another singer and asked me to join one day and uh, and it just kind of happened. It just we we got Jonathan Davis in the band, and and when we heard his voice with our music, we knew that we were going to have a record deal. I knew it. It was just we just had a unique sound. You know, it wasn't like the best band in the world, but we had something crazy going, and we got a record deal, and it just took off. Well, let's talk about the craziness. The craziness leads to multi-platinum albums. Craziness leads to multiple Grammys. Uh, your passion is guitar, you're on the biggest stages in the world, mm. you're considered one of the best guitarists in the world. Like, you are, I mean, people screaming, fans, what's missing in your life at that point? 
Um, even I don't know. I was I was just I was an insecure kid. I was, you know, my whole life I was just insecure, and I even carried that with corn. And you know, I was on a big stage, and like inside, I was still insecure. You know, think, you know, um, I had to get drunk just to just to get up courage. You know, to get on stage, and just it was just drugs and drinking and. And it's like I was in a prison, you know. I couldn't, I couldn't just be happy and confident in myself, and and it was just, I was just a mess. In that mess, you get married. You have a wonderful daughter. But you talk about in this amazing, I mean, tell-all book, hmm. how deep and dark it got. Because I mean, you saw your daughter, who you loved at such a young age, but you couldn't break the addiction at that time. Yeah. Um, I just got hooked on meth so bad that, you know, the the party was just overtaking me. You know, I was trying to be this other person, all wasted all the time, and and I, I could get away with it. You know, I was a functioning alcoholic, drug addict, and then when I got hooked on meth, I just that was it. I couldn't I couldn't function anymore. And um, you know, my wife ended up leaving me, and and my daughter needed at least one parent that was sane. And here I was, like just you know, snorting drugs every day. When I was around her, I would, you know, I had to do it to get out of bed. It's not like I was just snorted all day, but just to function. And um, and while I was on the road, I would I would do it all the time. And it just it got so bad that everybody was reaching out, you know, trying to get me to to hang out with them because I kind of went in seclusion by myself, and they didn't know I was doing speed. They just thought I was just kind of you know sick of touring and just you know wanted to be alone. But I was killing myself. And there's a point in the book you say, it was a pretty powerful statement, I didn't want to wake up. Yeah. I had times where, where uh, I fell into the, the speed thing. I was like, it's like there's a battle going on inside of me. Do I, do I quit corn and go and, and take care of my daughter? Because just nothing was working out with nannies and stuff. I was hiring nannies and just wasn't working out. Do I stay in corn and, and try to make it work? Do I quit? And, and it's just... I had all these thoughts. The speed was messing my mind up so bad. It was like I felt like I couldn't be a good dad. You know, I could. Ne- I thought I would never be able to be a happy person, and and uh, I felt like I wasn't good for her, even if I did get clean. And I just felt like a loser, the biggest loser. And I and I would mix Xanax and speed together, Jeez. you know, just to get some sleep. And some nights I would just be like, you know what? I hope I don't wake up. I just this life is is a, a joke to me. I'm not happy. I got everything I want. You know, as my dream came true, I'm still not happy, and uh, and then like the the next night, I would I would be scared and say, and I don't want to die. You know, I hope I don't die from these drugs. It was just completely out of my mind, and uh, it was scary. It was scary. Who reached out to you and said, "I believe in you. You are someone, and I can help you." Well, I was doing real estate. You know, I was a functioning <laughs> drug addict, but I was doing real estate with these guys in Bakersfield while I was touring, touring with corn. They happened to be Christian it's, and they reached out to me one day and they just said, you know, uh, I felt like, or Eric, the broker said, I feel like God wanted me to send you the scripture. And that's the scripture right here, Matthew uh, 11, 28. 28. Yeah. Come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened and I will give you rest. And so when they sent me that, I just, I didn't know what to think, you know, I didn't, it kind of weirded me out at first because I was thinking, no, no, they're Christians, they're going to come and, and try to, you know, try to change me. But at the same time, I needed help and I wanted help. So it was just tug of war going on in the mind. And I eventually ended up going to this church and, and listening to what the Christian guy had to say. You know, I just, I felt like I had to, I had to go and, and hang out with Christians because, you know, they're the people that don't drink, smoke, or cuss, you know, and I just wanted to, I wanted that to rub off on me. But when I went there, the guy talked about the the Lord being real, and that the pastor just talked about how you just got to speak with Him and, and just talk with Him, and all the bad stuff will fall off out of your life. And that's what I did after, right afterwards, after I went to the church service, I went home and snorted drugs and talked to the Lord, and I said, "Take these drugs from me, make me not want to do them. I I, I need to be here for my daughter, and uh, I need you to be real, you know." And uh, Within two weeks, I, everything fell away from me, and I've never been the same, and I've never been happier, and life's good. We know that the lead guitar playing that music led you into that path. I mean, of stardom and the drugs and all the celebrity status and the money. 
I'm excited to hear there's a new album coming out for you, but how scary is it getting back into, into the music when you knew that's what led you in, down that path before? Well, that guy's dead. That, I will never drink a beer in my life, take a pill, or snort any drugs ever again. It's just, it's just, it's dead. It's just miraculous, you know. Um, you know, the baptism that, that happened that every, the whole world saw that I did. It was, you took it, a pilgrimage to Israel. Correct? Yeah. 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 It just ended up in my hand. I believe that was a blessing from God. And I went and baptiz baptism symbolizes death. And so I just, you know, spiritually, I just was totally changed. And uh, I don't have the urge. It's a miracle. You know, I was addicted. I drank beer from 15 to 34 all the time. And it got worse. It progressed. And I just don't drink anymore. <laughs> it's just, I didn't go to any... It's like keeping your temptations away. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's, you know, um, I was with those guys and I rose to the top with the guys in Corinth. So it's a little intimidating to go by myself and not knowing what's going to happen. And, you know, but, you know, God, one thing that he does is he makes us face our fears and, and intimidations and... I love that about him because he doesn't want us to be wimps. He's like, get out there, march, and, and, and face your giants because you got to overcome them. You know, he's a big God, and he makes us big children for him. <laughs> and uh, you, show me your hands real quick. Just put your hands out real quick out here. These, these make magic on the guitar. So you partner with Fortitude Records, I know. We've got an album coming out. And you're singing music. You're singing and yeah. playing. How how exciting is that for you now? It's cool. It's challenging though. Like I just said, it's a, uh, it's you know there's some hurdles I got to jump over, but it's awesome. I mean to hear the music just flow through me. Um, at the end of corn, I couldn't. I didn't even have any. It's like my talent was cut, and the last like two or three records in corn, I just couldn't flow. You know, and and uh, we wrote songs, but they just to me they weren't where I wanted to be, where I wanted to go, and that was frustrating too, but they were still selling, you know? But um, as soon as I gave my life to God, it's like there was a, a present inside, and he just unwrapped it, and these songs started pouring out of me, and melodies that I never even thought I could do, and I, I was coming up with all the instruments and the vocals, and I just said, God, give me a voice, you know? And he gave me a voice, and it's awesome. It's just crazy to see. It's just I'm watching my life unfold now and doing things that I never thought I could do. And, uh, you know, he does that. That's what God does, and it's crazy. Crazy good. Crazy good. God bless you. God right bless on. all you've done. You. It's a tall, all book. Tell all book right here. Save me from myself. And you're saving a lot of people now with your message right and on. your example. And... Uh, I guess I should say, instead of saying party on, I should say rock on, right, brother? Rock on, rock, rock on. on. This is the book, Brian Welch, everybody. Congratulations, man. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. Are you tired of negative news? We are. And that's why we're creating a movement. By keeping it real. With what you need to know. It's more than what's happening. It's bringing hope back to our lives. So go to contv.com and join our movement.